I've partnered up with the F1 store for 2022, the best place to buy Formula 1 merchandise. Currently, they have an incredible end-of-year sale on with plenty of 2021 lines available at up to 40% off with official merch available from every Formula 1 team. If you're interested, click the link at the top of the description or in the pinned comment down below to help support the channel. Welcome to Silverstone, one of the staples of the Formula 2 Championship. It's a firm favourite amongst fans and drivers alike, and we're all keen to see what it has in store for us in today's race. The 3.6 miles of the Silverstone circuit in Great Britain should be familiar to fans and drivers alike. Built upon the site of a World War II airbase, the track features 18 corners and some good opportunities to overtake at the end of the two DRS zones located on the Wellington and Hangar Straits. Joining me today in the commentary box is former 2012 GP2 champion Davide Valsecchi. We all know the circuit so well, Davide. What's got your attention today? Always a pleasure, Alex. Everyone looks forward to Silverstone and which is such an intriguing grid, I think the fans will be excited for the start of today's race. We know these young drivers are hungry to prove themselves. Hopefully, we'll be seeing some more history being made today. With that then, Let's run through the grid order. An immense lap from Ben Fiscal yesterday puts him in pole position, with David Beckman alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Zendeli, Lawson, Yuri Vips, and for sure, Porcher, De Leda, Piastri, Ben Fiscal, Tictum, Schwartzman, Jack Aitken, and Sato, Deruvela, Joe, Lungard, and Felipe Dragovic, Samaya, Armstrong, Nissani, and Ralph Boschong completes the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. Hello everyone and welcome back guys then to the feature race here from the British Grand Prix. So far, both sprint races have delivered absolutely insane races. So if you haven't gone and checked them out, I would highly, highly recommend going back and doing so. But today that we're here back for the big points, the big prizes, it's ready for the, uh, for the feature race here from the British Grand Prix. 15 laps ahead of us. It is going to be a medium to hard compound race by the looks of it. So fingers crossed we can keep it clean and tidy off the start. We need big, big points today. I need to be brave. Enzo Fittipaldi has got too big a lead at the top of the championship, so fingers crossed this weekend we can try and close up that gap. But let's dive in then to the third and final race of the weekend. We've had so much fun here from Silverson. Fingers crossed that will continue. Five red lights, and it is going to be lights out, and away we go. That one actually, yeah, very much caught me by surprise. You guys often comment on my slow reaction times. As Ben Viscal have a look up the inside through turn one. Every race so far. We've been right with Ben Verscal through the first couple of turns. And just like we did in sprint race number two, we'll go straight back up the inside of him. In towards turn two there, around the outside of Alessio Deleda, trying to use the extra grip at these medium compound tyres of God. Oh, Deleda thought we might have a crash with him, like we saw him in the real life 2021 British Grand Prix. Can't remember which race it was. There was three wide up the road already. Poor Chair. He's been super aggressive all weekend there as we accidentally go around the outside of the Leda. Just trying to find some space. But yeah, poor Chair has been so, so feisty early on this weekend. They're trying to make up moves lap one. We do slot in past the Leda there in the HWA car. And yeah, straight up two places. Oh, sorry, up the one place even, I should say. Into P8 then. Off the start. Oh, look at this. Poor Chair really struggling now see him pick up any damage though no I think he was just a bit unconfident in the dirty air lap one but, but the sun is shining once more though here from Silverstone that's all we get all over the back of Porsche once more yeah sun is shining here for the British Grand Prix feature race which is exactly what we like to see and already we're going to be on the offensive once more there is Taylor Porsche weaving this way and that down the back straightway he moves over to the racing line he's gonna hand us the inside and if you're going to give it to us, mate, we'll have it absolutely. Thank you very much. I'm in a P7 now of the race at the end of lap one. Looks like it is Fittipaldi, yeah, who leads the way at the end of the opening lap. There, David Beckman, uh, Lorim Zendeli there ahead of Lawson Vashaw, Vips, and myself. And yeah, pretty pretty decent lap one, if I do say so myself. Lurie Vips definitely seems to be struggling a little bit as well early on 
in this race. Either this or we're just finding confidence everywhere so far this British GP weekend. We've spent a lot of this weekend trying to attack cars in front as Vips now is going to try and defend the inside line. He must have watched the move in his mirrors last lap that we did on poor chair. Ran the outside at the end of the hangar straight there just by giving the room try not to run off the road myself as Vips does hang on this time. We went purple through sector one and sector two but I think fastest lap is going to go out of the window here as we head through the final chicane. We'll try and put the power down. Looks like we're going to see low 42s from the front runners. We only go a couple of tenths off. DRS though now enabled here as we head on to lap three. And I'm not sure Vipsy might just get the DRS there. Look how slow he is through turn two up the inside. Thank you very much. Won't even matter about the DRS there. In fact, we might still have got it off him. And we might already have made the move work there as Vips not even willing to go for a send back at the inside through turn four on the exit of the loop there. So we are now up at a P6 of the race there. Really, really good start there here in Silverstone. Next up though, we've got both MPs and both high techs. Uh, sorry, we've already overtaken one of the high techs. Both MPs, a high tech, and I can never remember which team David Beckman's racing for. Something towards the back of the field league. There we go, new fast slap straight back down into the mid 41s. That's what we like to see there as we close up the gap. Don't know what it is on F1 2021 this week, but there is my team or F2. I'm just suddenly feeling so much more confident with the cars we've got. I don't know whether it's just sort of playing the game a bit more, you know, new year, new me, all that. But yeah, definitely feel like so far 2022 has been the year to be watching this channel. We're only, what, five, six days in? I'm, I'm getting hyped nice and early there. Yellow flag's out. Looks like Vips, I think, who was having issues there. He's going to be having an even bigger issue, and that's the fact the engine in the back of his car has given up working there. So a heartbreak for the Estonian, who's now out of the feature race here. That's going to possibly promote... Uh, no, I think Schwartzman is nowhere near the point still, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, poor Yuri Vips then out of the British Grand Prix. Team want us to go a bit longer on the tyres. Originally it was lap 5, they now want me to go to lap 7. I'm more than happy to try and extend the stint. If they think it's going to be the right way to go. I'm guessing Schwartzman still wants to box lap 6. It's all over the curbing through Maggots and Beckett. So I'll be now going to be able to get a run on Richard Vershaw. All over the grass on the exit. But we hold it in a straight line. Are we going to be able to get a run on Vershaw there? Watching the back of the MP Motorsport car. To the outside. No, to the inside. In towards the end of the hangar straight. That's going to be another move pulled off. Thank you very much. I'm going to P5 now. I say that. Uh, Richard Vashore tries to do the up and under on us. Is he going to be able to get the run back around the outside? It's a brilliant little battle with Richard Vashore. We'll give him the room on the exit of the corner. Still side by side, though, as we head out of the final turn. But Richard Vashore thinks better of it. He kind of gets pinched. Five seconds ahead of Schwartzman. But yeah, like I was saying, you kind of get pinched through that final corner. And you definitely don't wallop the curb. Don't want to wallop the curb, sorry. And then wipe out the car on your outside. Right, come to the end of lap five. Are we going to see any of the guys in front of us making the call into the box? Uh, yeah, Zendeli and Lawson then into the pits. You often see in Formula 2, the overcut is the way to go rather than the under. Hasn't had much of an effect so far this season. But it is going to leave now Fittipaldi, Beckman and myself out as the current top three. Pit lane around here takes so much time as well. But I don't think we're going to see anyone get caught up in slower traffic. Now, if I was feeling particularly selfish, I'd probably box at the end of this lap, but Schwartzman hasn't pit yet, so he definitely wants to come in now. We're just losing a little bit of time to Fittipaldi and Beckman up the road, but yeah, these tyres are not dead by any means, but certainly not as grippy as they once were. Yeah, top two into the pits they come, though. I'm sure we're going to see everyone else behind us in, so is this a clever 200 IQ play by Prima, or is this going to put us further down the order? Only time will tell. What I do know is we need to nail this next lap like it's a qualifying Robert run. In the pits. Robert in the pits. I mean, I say that. Only two tenths off our PB. This lap. Give us the best in lap you can. Team, yep. Spot on there. We need a good in-lap in here. Yeah, we're only a couple of tenths off our PB that time, so not too bad. A warning light has now come on, though, here at Silverstone. We went purple through Sector 1. Sector 2 hasn't felt too shabby either here as we try and still keep the car rotated through. Now the fronts are definitely scrubbing as we head out onto the back straight. We're still purple through the second sector here. How do these cars handle so well when the tyres feel absolutely shot? But anyway, end of the hangar straight. Now is the moment of truth time. Are we going to potentially pull that a bit of an undercut here? Or oh, sorry, of an overcut even I should say. I've got to remember to get it slowed down though into the pits. 
Make sure we get it slowed down. That's so easy just to throw away a load of time. You know, I'd, I'd rather lose half a second trying to gain... Uh, sorry, I'd rather lose half a second than gain half a second and lose 10 through a penalty. Or something like that. But of course, we have got one of the first boxes as well in the pit lane. Open for a nice, clean 5.7 second stop like every other one has been so far this season. Go, go now. Well, I mean, it was 5.7, but I struggled to get the car in gear. We've got more yellow flags. Looks like that's going to be the Campos, I want to say. David Beckman's teammate. Can't remember who drives that thing, though. Uh, once more. Is it Ralph Boschung? I think it's Ralph Boschung here. But as we head back out of the pit lane, far more important things to focus on here as Fittipaldi is going to go back around the outside. And I think he's actually just spanned there as we are going to come out exactly where we were when we came back in. Uh, yeah, just ahead of Richard for sure. So next up, yeah, Larim Zendeli, who was, you know, he was part of this little pack, wasn't he? It's Lawson has got the jump on the Zendeli here, but now we're going to have slightly softer, slightly, uh, sorry, slightly fresher rubber uh, between now and the end of this GP. So we've got to make this count. We've got to hope Enzo Fittipaldi can't run away at the front again. All over the back now of Larim Zendeli. Oh, look at that. Why is he going that slowly through turn two there? We had to get on the brakes a corner that's completely flat out normally. Luckily, somehow no damage from that one. These F2 cars are generally built pretty tough on F1 2021. It's not quite touring car levels, but you can get away with a tiny bit of contact here as we head down the back straight away once more, though. Not going to be close enough to the MP Motorsport car this time. Of course, not helped based on the fact we have just got an absolute slipstream train going on at the moment. But we're going to run deep into here. Get the car rotated round. Point the nose in. Oh, no. That could have been a really good run there. We have still got a decent run on him. Are we going to be able to have a look? Hamilton Verstappen style once more here. We're going to have a look to the inside. Not quite close enough. Could have maybe just about got the nose there. But don't think we would have warranted much space on the inside. But definitely applying the pressure now to one of my title rivals. Lorim Zendeli in towards Maggots and Beckett's trying to get as much clear air as we can over the front wing as we try to battle the lack of air and downforce there. Trying to put the power down out to the hangar straight once more, though. We haven't given ourselves the best run in the world. And yeah, we're definitely not going to be close enough to go for a send this time around. Six laps to go, though. Time is ticking if we want to try and get to the front of this field. Oh, big kick of oversteer there on the exit. To Pally at the front of this race. It just nabbed me fastest lap point there as, again, we try to have a look at the inside of Zendeli. In typical Teo Poor Chair style fashion there. Zendeli just having none of that on the exit of the corner. Can we put the power down out onto the Wellington Straight once more? They're running a little bit wide on the exit of the corner. But we are going to be a bit closer to Zendeli this time round. We're going to have to be brave. If we want to try and open up a move here anywhere. Can we try and do what we attempted last lap? See if we get a bit more success from it. Oh, Zendeli was aware of it though. Try to just move me out a little bit further towards the marbles. But again, that's how you execute that kind of thing that we were trying. Zendeli goes defensive, though, around the outside. Down the back straight. Not quite able again to get close enough. Oh, I think we filled up his mirrors there. Just threw him off ever so slightly. Look at this, Larim Zendeli. Really, really struggling at the moment to try and keep us at bay. And we are just trying to be relentless with our attack. Trying to force him into a mistake here. Not really going for the move, just kind of almost a psychological warfare as we just try and sit on his gearbox. But heading now onto the hangar straight once more. We're going to have to go for a send soon, surely. We can't spend the rest of the day looking at the back of the MP Motorsport car there. The rims and Delhi very, very early on the brakes. Run a little bit wide on the exit of the corner, and that might put pay to that for yet another lap. Ooh, gaining a bit under braking. Oh, that was not what we wanted, though. Richard Vashore just goes into the back of me. I think we've got away with it, though. Easy on the aggression. He clean overtakes or will face a penalty. I'm guessing Vashore might not have got away with that one as well as I would have hoped there, but not a lot we could have done. Just dropped the rear end slightly locked up. And Vashore, yeah, it was just the wrong place at the wrong time. But, yeah, not not too happy with that one. Apologies to Vashore, but again, not a lot we could have done. I mean, yeah, as soon as we got a little bit of clear air again, we're immediately all over the back of the room Zendeli. Needs to try and get the fastest lap bonus points back from Enzo Fittipaldi. It will be little points like that that really do add up come the end of the campaign. But all over the back, though, again, of Zendeli, who actually locks up this time round through the final couple of corners. More interested about trying to get the fastest lap first of all there, as Fittipaldi does a 41-2. We do a 40.6! That was way quicker than I expected to achieve.
team happy with that one as well. Oh, it's, what is Lin Zendeli doing through there? You can't just keep doing that, man. You can't break through turn two like that. Somehow, again, we've hung on to it. Looks like we've got a dams car with issues. But, yeah, Zendeli, second time he's done that this race, where he's broke right in the middle of the corner where he doesn't need to. And that completely threw me off there. I think we got away again with no damage. That puts us nearly three seconds back, though. We're going to have to dig, like, deep to get close by the end. Oh, there we go. Another fastest, fastest lap. lap of the race. Keep this up. That goes to show just how hard I'm pushing to try and close back up this gap to Lurim Zendeli. I'm not even worried about the points. This is personal. Pulling away from the car behind by half a second a lap. But are we going to get within DRS range this time around on Lurim Zendeli? Yes, we just about are. Less than two to go now. Like I said, this is personal. I don't care about the bonus points. I want to try and just get Zendeli and move ourselves into P4. And now we've rocked up to the back of the rims and Delhi Purple again through the middle sector. We are just finding time as these tyres, it's really odd, the F2 tyres always seem to sort of wear in over the course of a Grand Prix. But now all over the back of the rims and Delhi with just over one to go up the inside. It's going to be a big brave send there, no room for him on the exit. In fact, doesn't stay R in 10, I don't know what does. I'm at a P4 now with one lap to go. Of the British GP on 40.2. Where are we finding this sort of pace from there? That's almost down towards the sub 100 second lap times here. Around the British Grand Prix. But Beckman and Lawson now just in front of us. Are we potentially going to see a last lap move between one of these guys? Are we going to be close enough now to have a look potentially on Liam Lawson as well there. As we try and put the power down out onto the Wellington straight. Lawson's going to get really close to Beckman here. And hopefully this is just going to bring us closer to the pair of them. As it looks like, yeah, Fittipaldi has just been able to break away at the front once more. And build up that gap. We go purple through the first sector there, but a bit of a mistake. So we head through sector two. Oh, Beckman just squirreling around up the road. He's definitely feeling the pressure at the moment as myself and Lawson. Both breathing down his neck. Can Beckman, the young German, hold on for P2? Or are we going to see him potentially get relegated? Behind either Lawson, myself, or maybe even the pair of us there. A bit wide on the exit of the old turn one, but we get away with that. And now we've got to try and really get all over the back of Lawson. Heading through Maggots and Beckett's here, attacking the curbs, getting on the wheels towards the grass. Through there, just trying to find any sort of time and momentum we can there. Lawson, though, feeling the pressure as we head down the hangar straight. We're both closing in on David Beckman here. Are we going to be able to look for a move up the inside of Lawson? We go... Get it slowed down. He finds the grip round the outside. We give him a big old squeeze just about giving him the space on the exit of the corner there. Oh, he tries to give me a squeeze himself as we go completely opposite lock through the penultimate corner there. Even more contact as Lawson tried to turn into the apex with a Pramer on his inside and we do take the podium. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Ferme. So another fantastic victory for Charus today. And I have to wonder, Davide Valsecchi, just what set them apart from the competition here? Although the Formula 2 cars are all the same spec, the winner just looked better out there. It would have been a combination of getting those tires up to running temperature faster and driving to the condition on track. They made it look easy out there today. Looks like they're on their way out onto the podium now, and what a result this is, and a popular one with the crowd as well. Great stuff to see the Charouz team on top here today. After this round of the World Championship, here's how things look in the driver's tape. On to the teams then. The lead at the top comes down after a strong weekend from the challenging pack. Another team that will be satisfied with this race is Charousse, whose good result moves them further up in the championship. After all this drama, you'll be mad not to join us for the next race. We hope to see you then. Take care. 
Well, there we are then, guys. The end of the British Grand Prix weekend. And three, let's be honest, brilliant GPs here. Silverstone, as always, has delivered. And we cannot thank the guys enough here at the circuit there. But it is Enzo Fittipaldi who wins the final race of the weekend there. Two out of three for the young Brazilian. He is looking absolutely formidable at the moment there. The only other man, I think, to dip into the one minute fort is there come the end of the weekend. David Beckman, though, does hang on to P2 ahead of myself and Liam Lawson. They're a bit of contact towards the end, but like I said, Lawson kind of turned at an apex uh, with a Prima on his inside there. Teo Porcher, P5 from 7th on the grid ahead of Zendeli, the leader Viscal Schwartzman finally gets some points as well as Jack Aitken, uh, which is good to see there. But yeah, Richard Vashaw dropping back late on in the race. Mark Armstrong and Yuri Vips both not making it through to the checkered flag in that one, and it does now mean championship-wise, yeah, look at that, Fittipaldi, 35 points clear of Liam Lawson, we're now 46 back from the Brazilian, we need an absolute mountain of a uh, mountain climb uh, in the second half of the year there, 12 races down, 12 races to go, now ahead of uh, Lorim Zendeli as well though, by just one point here, so we are doing pretty well this weekend. This weekend has certainly played into our hands there. David Beckman jumps for the shore. Uh, Sato, like we said, yeah, down the order jumps Guan Yu Zhou. And constructors wise, Sharud back ahead of high tech once more. Yeah, still looking mighty, mighty close between those top three teams. It looks like we're solidifying P4, but yeah, we need Schwartzman alongside us if we really want to be in this fight later on in the year there. But you can see the final race results, or uh, championship results, I should say, from the weekend there. Fittipaldi with 46 points there to my 38. David Beckman on 29, ahead of Porcher on 22. So we really were, yeah, the only man uh, that stayed close to Enzo Fittipaldi this weekend. But qualifying, qualifying, qualifying. We need a good qualifying later on in the camp. Well, we need good qualifying for the rest of the campaign, to be honest, if we want to score big points here and close at the gap to Enzo Fittipaldi but thank you all so much for watching if you have enjoyed do make sure you leave a like and get yourself subscribed I'm pretty certain next we head back to Monza for round five of the campaign I might be wrong though I want to say it's Monza Russia uh, Saudi Arabia and Abu Dhabi between now and the end of the campaign but again I could be completely wrong I'll see you guys wherever we are next Friday None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.